Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number six, I believe, of the PBAL, and we are up against Max Rapture and his Tasmanian Toxic Rogues. Now, this is going to be a really interesting matchup, right? Because we are both four and one. We both had really interesting seasons. I've had a lot of changes on my team. His team counters mine really, really well, but I'm really okay. So we do, in fact, see the Tox effects. Now, I kind of hard expected him to not want to bring the Tox effects, but I was very wrong, and I have very few answers to the Tox effects. But we're gonna try to deal with it, right? So let's see here. We see the Clefable, Latias, Toxapex, Steelix, Heracross, and the Porygon. So pretty much everything that I'm scared of. No Tangrowth. No Tangrowth is very, very interesting. Um, no Tangrowth, and I pretty much expected everything else. I really did think that the Tangrowth would, would want to come over the Toxapex, but uh, we will see it here, and we're gonna try to deal with it, right? Um, I don't quite know what I want to lead off with here. I don't know what I, I don't quite know what I want to lead off with here. Part of me just wants to lead off with um, Silvali, but I don't want to reveal the Silvali flying too too soon. I could. Mm, what would I do? <laughs> I mean, I could just lead off with the Urshifu. Urshifu is a good like all around lead here. I think if he leads off with the Steelix, yeah, I think this is okay for now. Uh, I think we're going to try to figure it out. Um, yeah, again, that Tox Effects really threw me off, right? So, okay, so he, so uh, the stats show that he's only brought Tox Effects to, I believe, two matches this season. And so I thought it would be pretty safe. Um, and, and and he doesn't bring in particularly bad matchups. And I felt like this would not be a great matchup for it because I had the Rotom and the, and the Zerka Tree kind of for it. And I kind of thought that he would think that it would be a bad matchup for it. But, yeah, just the fact that it's not here really just kind of uh, threw me. But we will, we will see the Urshfu up against Steelix, which is kind of what I expected. Now, I now I have to assume that he would want to lead off with either a Body Press or a or Stealth Rocks. In which case, I can just U-turn out and try to go into my Chandelure. And then my Chandelure starts threatening a lot of damage. Uh, but let's see here. Up against Steelix... Um, that did about 9-ish percent, I guess. But yeah, we will see a pretty standard Steelix. Fire Blast should always be a KO. I think I'm pretty confident that he either want to hit up a uh, some hazards or just go for a body press in this situation. If he goes for the Earthquake, I would be pretty surprised. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's kind. Of, this is the scenario that I kind of wanted to find myself in. And now I can very freely get off a Fire Blast. Uh, I might want to get off a Shadow Ball. What kind of switch? I mean, he does have the... Hmm. He does have the Toxapex available. Although, I mean, this puts a dent in, into a Toxapex, right? I think... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can check it out. But uh, this should always do damage to the Steelix. Toxapex is really his best switch in. But yeah, overall, this really surprises me because... Yeah, I really should have gone for the Shadow Ball. But Fire Blast still does a lot of damage. A lot of damage here. Yeah, so that, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, confirms uh, close to max defense here. Shadow Ball actually would have had a chance to to hit this coming in. But I think I just hit it again, right? Either that or I try to get up some hazards early on. If I, try, if I do that, then... Yeah, I feel like my Skarmory is reasonably safe. Uh, so, I, if I remember right, I think I think the Skarmory is kind of built to kind of get in uh, hazards and then quickly leave. Now, that does kind of put me in a little bit of a bind because um, I don't really need this to switch in anything. But if I do play it really fast and loose, then there is a potential. I, I think he's counting out that, uh, the fact that I'm Specs. Um, but if I play it kind of too fast and loose, then... Um, I lose my defog for later, which is going to hurt me if he tries to set up Toxic Spikes, obviously. But, yeah, this was always going to be an easy switch for me to make. I think I have to defog right away. I don't think there's any reason to want to let my uh, Mons get get uh, Toxic Spiked here. And I'm fine with doing this. I might have wanted to bring Taunt, but really it's, it's a difficult call to make. But now... <sighs> Um, in thinking about this, I think it might have been a mistake not to want to bring the want to bring the Rotom. I think um, Rotom has a pretty solid matchup against a lot of his team. 
but uh, just the way that the, the, these kind of teams are built, um, it's kind of difficult to justify uh, not bringing it now. Now, what I really want to do is go back, is double back into this thing. Actually, let me see. So, if this thing is max defense, right? Now that we know that for sure, or close to for sure, uh, Urshifu is still doing around half, which is not ideal. It's definitely not ideal. It looks like the most damage that I'm getting out of this is going to be uh, Shadow Ball on my... Yeah. Okay, so I kind of want to play around with this a little bit. I want to go out into this and threaten a Shadow Ball. Maybe I could kind of bait in the Porygon to want to come in. Maybe. Now that he knows that I'm Specs for sure, for sure. Goes for a follow-up Scald, which is really interesting. Because I think he would have assumed that... I, I mean, I, I, I would have thought that he would have assumed that I would have got wanted to get up... um rocks and he would have forced me to defog by clicking toxic spikes with me um but yeah i really want to click shadow ball assuming that the that the porygon would, would want to come in i feel like i click it anyway um sorry i, I really want to click fire blast with him thinking that i want to hmm i really don't want to give porygon free turns here I could also pull a double here. I could also pull a double here. He could want to go into the Latias as well. Oh, I think I... Mm, this one's a really tough call. I I think I, I, I think I go for it. I, I kind of want to do or die a little bit. We're, we're going to see. This this matchup is already inc incredibly difficult for me because of um, this Toxapex and me not bringing answers to the Toxapex. But I really, really did not expect him to want to bring it. Yeah, okay. Okay, there he goes. But now, I, I mean, I feel like... I mean, if this Toxapex goes down, part of me says I don't even mind the Chandelure going down as as much. But yeah, him letting me get off of a Shadow Ball is kind of nuts to me. Because that... I mean, that's potentially a 20% difference in damage. Hmm. I think I just kind of have to let this happen. And then, if I let this happen, that allows in the Urshifu. And I can then get some free Wicked Blows. I could, I could maybe play off. Does withdraw. Interesting. Latias? Yeah, it goes on Latias. This is still Specs damage. I mean, this is pretty sizable damage here. Yeah, that is very reasonable damage here. Now... What I'm most curious about, uh, that's... Oh, we do get the burn. Um, it just kind of stink, but that does... Yeah, this has to be at least max HP. Yeah, that looks like just max HP, so... There's so much, there's so much that I'm thinking about right now. There's so much that I'm thinking about right now. Now, I don't think Latias gets Dazzling Gleam, does he? Daz yeah, no. I th That's what I thought, right? Because it, it seems like it should get Dazzling Gleam, but I don't think it does. I, I really want to just make this play here, and then it gets some free Wicked Blows off, because now his switches into Wicked Blow are really not looking ideal. Um, and this is overall just going to be a pretty strong play for me, I think. It was for Thunderbolt. Yeah, okay. That's totally fair. But now Wicked Blow just threatens one, I think, right? Yeah, Wicked Blow going into anything on his team is going to do a lot of damage. Even if he wants to bring in the Clefable, I think I'm putting myself in a really solid spot here. But let's just see. If the Clefable does come in... Um, okay. That's an interesting way to go in this matchup, but... Yeah, Clefable does take a Wicked Blow into an Iron Head. But this thing is faster than me, which is concerning. Um, and he knew that I was faster. That he was faster. He knows that I'm adamant, right? What would I want to do here? Um, yeah, I think I'd definitely make this play. I think I'd definitely, definitely make this play. 
with draws. Very, very interesting. Goes out into the Heracross. Um, yeah. I mean, this is definitely what you want to see if, if you're me, right? But I can pretty freely. I think he. I think he goes into the Toxapex for sure, for sure. But if he goes into the Toxapex, if he goes into the Toxapex, then that means I have to double because he knows that I'm Specs into it, and he can go into the Porygon. But I don't think I mind the double, right? But it doesn't matter because I'm only, I'm not doing that much more damage, am I? I think I have a... Do I have a chance of two hit if the Toxapex comes in? And I land twice? Let me see. Toxapex coming in? It has a, it has some damage on it. I don't know what this is. Yeah, okay. This is the Toxapex. I think I have a chance of two hit this thing. And if I do... Then that's nutty. Yeah, I do have a chance of two hit this thing. And I just have to take it. This is... This is... This damage is too... Compelling. And I could miss. I definitely could. I've, I've landed four Fire Blasts in a row. I've landed four Fire Blasts in a row. Does withdraw. So pretty much no harm, no foul on that damage. I, I think I get a little bit off on that. But... Um, this should be fine. Yeah, okay. We do, we do pick up a, a KO, which is big, which is big. But the Latias was not what I was most afraid of, in all honesty. Um, it does free up a little bit. Of what I want to do here. But this does let him go into... I don't know what it lets him go into. The Toxic is, isn't as free now that it has a little bit of damage on it. Um, and anything else just gets hit really hard. Um, the Porygon could outspeed and come in. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely the play. Downloads. Oh, man. Yeah, Attack Rose. So, I didn't do this on purpose. But what I should have done was made sure that, that I that I force him into into the download. I don't know if this is a bad play. I don't know if he predicts this and goes for a Thunderbolt, but I did run a, a couple of counts, and this thing has to be, like, super-duper specs in order to, to hit this thing. Um, but let's see. Porygon Z does go for Thunderbolt, so that's potentially really bad, but we take it decently well. Okay, we take it decently well. Porygon Z. Uh, and we're going to... Can we tell anything off that damage? That was about 50 points of damage on a Thunderbolt. I feel like it's not... Oh, oh, I was calculating adaptability. That's why. That's why I was super duper scared. But yeah, I don't, uh, I don't even think it's max... Oh, this is also some specs. This could be no boosting item. It does look like no boosting item, but either way, um, Baton Pass is always, always going to be the play. Baton Class is always, always going to be the play, which actually makes me... Oh, I was going to say, it actually makes me think that this thing might be, um... This thing might be Scarfed, but it is definitely not Scarfed. It is for sure, for sure not Scarfed. Now, it looks like Urshifu always comes in here. And Oko's with Wicked Blow. Um... Well, okay, this thing could be mildly bulky if it's... I, I don't know, let's say it's max HP. I still have a really strong chance to KO with, with Life or Wicked Blow. And Wicked Blow guards me against um, the Toxapex coming in, which is what I really, really want to prevent. So I'm just going to go for it, regardless of what happens here. I could also U-turn, which would put me in a really interesting position, but I think I need to keep the Toxapex as low as I possibly can. The Heracross can also come in, which uh, I didn't think about until just now, but I guess we just deal with it, right? So I feel like this Heracross just has to be Scarfed, right? This hair cross just has to be scarfed, and that's still a very decent amount of damage. But uh, it's leftovers. Okay. Okay. That's arguably scarier because at least if it's scarfed, I could play off it better. But the fact that it's leftovers means that means that it could be like some crazy swords dance, like bulk upset, I, I think, or something like that. I, I don't quite know um, what leftovers is meant to do here, but. It's scary. It's really, really scary. Regardless, this is always going to be my dedicated switch into this thing. Um, but it's not that good of one. Yeah, yeah. Even even because knockoff, I can't. My item can't be knocked off, so I'm reasonably safe here. Um, this thing could have frog slide. Either way, parting shot is a hundred percent of the time I play. A hundred, a hundred percent of the time I play. Um, it, it 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 looks to me like if I do win this, it's going to be off the back of really aggressive momentum. 
Um, and I have to keep that aggression up, and I have to keep up um, this kind of overall tempo. Otherwise, uh, this is going to be pretty bad, right? My Togetic is already really weakened, which sucks, but I'm going to have to deal with it. Uh, goes into the Clefable. It goes into the Clefable. And this is going to let me... Uh, I don't know. It, I mean, it, it lets me go into the Tauros, and I think the Tauros is ultimately going to be my strongest play here. So let me see here. Tauros. I swear I did run a bunch of calcs like before this match, but uh, I am mildly stressed, and and um, it was a while ago when I ran a bunch of calcs. So yeah, I can get off a body slam, which is going to do a lot to anything he wants to bring in. Steelix is obviously an option, but um, I I mean I believe I calced it out that that uh, sheer force life or flamethrower is doing just a lot of damage. It does let me get off a body slam. Just still a two KO. Does moonblast into me, which is not great. But um, yeah, I'm not I'm not the most concerned about that. Um, I don't know what to do here because he can play off of a lot that I can do here. I think I just click Iron Head, right? Let me. Just, uh, I oh, I, I have Fire Blast, which is uh, funny to me, but I think I did at least run a count. Yeah, yeah. It looks like max HP. I'm doing. I'm doing still a very decent amount of damage. I could. Yeah, I think I just try for a body slam, or I can double. I mean, but mm, no, he wouldn't let this thing go down, right? He just doesn't let this thing go down, right? He just doesn't, right? But what does he need this for? He needs it for the Urshifu, but it's already so weakened. I'm just gonna try to take the damage. We'll see. We'll see. Steelix could honestly Oko me with body press, which sucks. But I think with the Chandelure still in the back, I think he doesn't want to go for the for the body press yet. I think I still have him in a little bit of a bind in that in that sense. And we just try to land what like a six consecutive fi fire blast. Uh, I just said if, if I win, it's gonna be off the back of some uh, really um, aggressive play. If it's gonna be anything, it's gonna be off of landing all these gosh dang fire blasts. But there's a fire blast. I really don't think you body press. Yeah, you don't body press here. You don't body press here, and yeah, yeah, we just take that. And now, and now it looks like I can. It doesn't look like body slam is gonna do enough here. Yeah, just barely out of body slam range, really. So I have to fire blast again. It's gonna suck because of the toxipax. It's gonna suck because of the toxipax, but I just get damage off on the toxipax, and I try to keep it as low as possible so that yeah, he lets the steel go down. Okay, that's huge. That's huge. But now toxipax comes in, and I have to give this thing up to, to the toxipax, right? I just have to give this thing up to the Toxifex because I need to keep it low enough that other Mons on the team can pick up a little bit of the slack here. But Toro's getting some fire blast, getting a fire blast KO. That's what a seventh consecutive fire blast. I, I I really hope I'm counting correctly, but I believe that's that's right. Um, I really should not be playing this um, aggressive of a game here, but I mean this like risky of a game is what I should say. But I'm just gonna try to get as much damage off as I can. This thing is what about 70ish percent. Maybe 72%. Um, get keeping this thing low so that at the very least, if it if it does KO this thing, it doesn't. Um, it at least like breaks even in terms of regenerator. Yeah, goes for a recover, which is not great. So it does leave my Tauros on board, but puts me in a not great position. Um, this could be an opportunity to get a Brox. Actually, this, yeah, this might be the opportunity to get a Brox. I might just do it. I might just do it. Because, I mean, rocks are potentially really huge. Rocks are potentially really huge. Goes for the skull. So, again, Tauros is still on board. I still have a little bit of offensive pressure, a presence here. He could go for the toxic spikes. Which could net me a free switch in. 
to something if I am bold enough to take it. But I could put myself in a bad position if not. Um. Well, he also has to respect Defog on this as well. He has to respect Defog on this as well. So yeah, I guess I, I guess we just go for it. A lot of my team is really low, so maybe that's not the best option. But if I can just punch his team a lot and and force him to take, um, oh, this is bad. Okay, I, maybe I don't beat this thing anymore. I very potentially don't don't beat this thing anymore. If this thing has toxic, then I'm then I think I'm just screwed. But it might not have room for it, right? So stockpile, scald, recover. Toxic spikes. Stockpile, scald, recover, toxic spikes. It it literally never beats my it literally never beats my Togetic. So so I can just literally sit in front of Togetic for forever. Um. If he really wants to go to timer, then I'll go to timer with him. But I'm gonna have to click my moves fast. But I will 100% go, go to timer with him if it means um, leaving my my Togetic in front of this thing because it can't really touch it. If it, all it has to hit it with is Scald, and my Togetic has max special defense with an Evil Light and just being just incredibly bulky, no matter what happens. But if it does choose to aggressively stockpile, then I'm in a really pretty bad spot overall. Uh, does get the burn eventually, which is fine. But uh, the stockpile is really concerning. Like I don't really know what to do. I, I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't have whirlwind on this particular set. But uh, yeah, even him getting up toxic spikes is not the best. Because I'm just. I mean, at this point, I would have to rely on crits, and I have to rely on like clicking moves fast. I, I really don't know what to do in this position. But again, this thing just doesn't beat. This thing just doesn't beat Togetic. Ever. Um, because I can roost up for absolutely free. Uh, and... I mean, I don't know. Maybe I screwed myself with timer. Maybe I'm going to lose this on timer because he has so many more mods in me. But if I lose to a Tox effect just sitting there and stalling, then I just don't know what to say. Like, I'm honestly kind of speechless. Especially when he brought Toxic Spikes to a match when I when I should have brought... Um, when I should have brought a Rotom... Mo, um, and that would have been levitating off the ground. He's gonna burn me eventually, which so, so I'm not that concerned about it. But I'm just gonna roost here. Hey everyone, this is Roost from a couple days later, and like I was saying, throughout a lot of this matchup, I really never had any solid answers for the Toxic Packs, and you know, this is just spoiler alert here. We do end up getting timer stalled all the way down to the end of our land timer. So that was really an unfortunate way to kind of have this match end, but just as an update, right? So I did end up bringing this up to the mods because there was an explicit rule in the books against timer stalling. And just generally speaking, this is kind of the type of situation that that would have been allowed to be uh, resolved over showdown or something like that so i try to see wh whatever we could have done and i ended up getting awarded the win for this matchup so uh, it was submitted as a 6-4 so this will only be a two point differential even though rapture was never able to ko amon and it probably would have been really difficult for him in his position to kind of ko amon because with the tox effects he was kind of working kind of Amon down because Toxpex wasn't really in a position to KO much. Uh, and with the kind of balancing that I could do around around the Toxic Spikes, I was always going to kind of be in a position to deal with it. Except, of course, Timer was ultimately going to be how this matchup ends. And you'll see a lot of this battle. I was really trying to find a way to kind of stall him out of his Scald PP. So at first, I thought that Scald had 16 PP. And I literally learned in the course of this match that Scald actually has a maximum of 24 PP. Which really was off-putting to me, but I I think I got him towards the end. I never actually counted, but I think I had him towards the end at a point where he was almost out of skulls. If I had to guess, just a pure guess, I probably made him use about 20-ish skulls, which would have pretty much made him run out of skulls. That would have put us in a really interesting position, and that's kind of why I brought it up to the mods because in an, in a showdown situation where I would have had in a kind of infinite time scale, I definitely could have PP stalled uh, a, a Toxifex. I could have made it so that I never you know functionally completely lose to a Toxapex, and I would have had some alternate win condition in the end eventually. Now, obviously, Max would have played this match pretty differently. He probably could have continued to use Toxapex just as a pivot to kind of threaten a lot of my mons, but uh, just the way the match was going, I think I kind of had a lot of the tools that I needed to kind of deal with his team as it was, but I guess we're never going to know because this is what he ended up doing, and instead of 
us extending this match out further and having us kind of try to resolve it on showdown and forcing me to, to try to pp stall or anything like that i was just awarded the win and that is going to put us at five and one for the foreseeable future and we're going to go into the next couple weeks uh, i believe right around that second seed area right under the top seed undefeated goldoa so we're gonna keep trying to kind of make a push uh, as much as we can but with that i think i can call this one a match it was an incredibly long this was a over 50 minutes worth of battle and hopefully this resulted in something interesting but back to me from a bit ago Big damage yeah and there it goes so I mean that's gonna be how week six ends right um this was a really difficult match to kind of play this was a difficult match to prep for and kind of think through but uh there's a lot just going on here right like i said i really did not expect him to want to bring the toxic packs i have two really really strong electric types with my rotom and my circuitry i really thought he would leave it on the bench and honestly there was a lot that tank growth could have done in this matchup here but ultimately this is just kind of how this matchup ends and as speechless as i am right now that's going to be it for me thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the pbal as well as many more things to come up really really soon but with that thank you guys so much for watching, everybody. Once again, out.